Let's continue our discussion by looking at multimedia. Multimedia is actually a combination of either text, graphics, audio, video, animation, as well as file conversion and compression. And we do find multimedia in various forms. For example, companies use it to create brochures, presentations and reports, or we find it that they use it for ad advertising. Now, typically in our daily lives, we experience multimedia on various levels, um, on TV, on our mobile devices, Facebook, everywhere. Now, let's quickly look at each one of these categories that can be used. For example, if we talk about text and graphics, and I'm sure everybody knows the difference between it, but it's usually we, we use a combination of these to go and create reports and statements or to create content, websites, um, blog posts, etc. If we look at audio, this typically includes where we're going to record music, which is recorded sounds and um, a variety of sounds that we're going to capture on a computer and use it for playback. Now it's important to realize that we do get various formats, for example MP3, WAV and MIDI. Now what is the difference between these formats? It all comes down to the way in which information is captured in order to produce a particular sound. And uh, You might find that if you move sounds from one system to another that you actually need to go and convert the sounds. Another concept that they refer to here is streaming audio and again I don't think I need to talk about this which is where you listen to music and while it's downloading it's immediately playing the, the audio from an internet resource. The next type is video and animations. Now this is actually where you've got a bunch of still images that's displayed rapidly after each other and that creates the illusion of movement. Again, it might be saved in various formats, for example, AVI, MPG, MOV. Also, you might be familiar with MP4. We also get a concept known as streaming video, which is similar to what we see in something like YouTube, whereas while you're watching, it's busy processing and downloading the rest of the video. The last two concepts related to multimedia include file conversion and compression. Now file conversion is where we might need to convert perhaps older formats into newer formats using software or specialized hardware. And we also get various sites nowadays that allows you to perhaps convert let's say AVI file to a MP4 file. So it's important to go and look at these things because some of the newer systems might not be able to recognize and use the older formats. File compression is where we've got very large files and especially if you don't want to use it on a regular basis, the recommendation is that you go and compress it or make it smaller to allow you to um, send it quicker over the internet or perhaps to save space on your devices. Now let's go and talk about virtual reality. Virtual reality is actually referred to as immer immersive virtual reality in which the user becomes fully immersed in an artificial environment or a 3D world. Now in most cases these are completely generated by a computer and it can either be real or abstract and it allows the user to gain a better understanding of the world, virtual world by interacting with the behaviors and the objects within that world. For example, if we think about something like Avatar, the movie, The Blue People, um, it doesn't exist, but by using a device, you can actually enter that environment as if you're really there. So the important thing is we would need to have a special interface device that would allow us to see that environment, to hear the sounds, as well as to record our interactions with the environment. Perhaps if we're moving our head, where we're looking and what we're saying to that environment. Now, on the opposite side, we have augmented reality, which is a combination of computer generated data, again, images, sound or text, that would be placed on the real world. So what we currently see would be um, enhanced by providing additional information. 
Now for each one of these two types we need to have devices that we wear and this is known as a head mounted display. So typically it's in the form of the Oculus or the Microsoft HoloLens or Google Cardboard where you use your cell phone which would allow you to use screens and these screens would be directed at each one of your eyes which would ultimately create a 3D type environment and provide you access to that information. These devices also contain position trackers that will enable you to monitor the position of your head as well as the direction which you're looking and then that would allow you to interact with the environment. The devices would also go and generate the 3D world for you, so you might find that you have a different view for each one of your eyes. It would have built-in speakers so that you can hear the sounds, and it might also incorporate haptic feedback. For example, if you wear a glove, you would be able to feel the objects as you're interacting with this 3D world, which otherwise wouldn't have been available. Now we get the different forms of virtual reality and you guys might have experienced a lot of these automatically. First of all when you play games they try to simulate a 3D environment in which you can interact with the environment by scrolling and moving your mouse cursor or the keys on your keyboard typically in the form of games. You might have seen stereo viewing where you use stereo glasses if we think in terms of 3D movies at cinemas or if you think about the red and the blue glasses that provided you to see 3D photographs, we get stereo projection systems and we also get telepresence systems where it can actually try to immerse you in a real world at a distant location. For example, if you want to go and visit Egypt, you don't have the money, you can put on these devices and it would teleport you to that region without you actually traveling there. So what are some of the examples of virtual reality? Virtual reality will and are found in medicine, education and training, entertainment and business and commerce. And I would highly recommend that you go and search for examples of virtual reality as well as augmented reality. There's a lot of new developments coming that's going to change the way in which we interact with each other, interact with our content and even do perhaps shopping. So some exciting stuff about to happen. We're going to conclude this discussion by looking at some last or specialized systems in the form of our assistive technology systems. Now these systems are typically there to support people with disabilities for example, if you can't maneuver, a, let's say, a wheelchair, you might have a system where you just gesture and the system would pick up your commands and then it would direct and control the wheelchair. Everybody is aware of Stephen Hawking's that cannot speak, but just by looking and pointing his eyes and making gestures, he actually can instruct the computer to say what he actually wants to talk about. The next system is known as game theory. Now, this is a mathematical theory that allows us to develop strategies in order to maximize gains and to minimize losses. So typically it would work in an environment where there's a set of rules and constraints and it would interact with that particular environment. We do find it in certain software applications, we find it in games, and we also find it in a lot of our mathematical formulas. Informatics can be classified as a combination of information technology with our traditional medicines. For example, if we talk about medicine or science, combining that with technology and information and the people involved with that, we would find informatics. Now the next image perhaps best describes that. So let's say we talk about um, health informatics, we would add have a lot of health information, let's say from hospitals or doctors, we would have our doctors, we would have our people interacting with that information and then we would have technology that supports the information. And where all three actually come together, that is where informatics take place. This concludes our discussion about 
knowledge management systems, AI, expert systems, as well as virtual reality and augmented reality. Please go and search for some video clips. There are some clips that I've liked in our YouTube channel, so please go and look at those as well in order to gain a better understanding of some of these technologies.